you may take the mic from one of the volunteers, introduce yourself and go into the question. Good morning, sir. I'm Pooja of Standard 9 of St. Jesus Anglo in High School in School Cardo. And my question is, as an ISRO chairman, what are your dream projects for the beneficial of children? When we talk about communication subjects of several types, they do help in providing telecommunication infrastructure for this country. In our younger days, we used to wait for almost 24 hours to touch a trunk call. Today, you don't worry about that. In the 80s, there were only four metros in this country having black and white television in the early 80s. Thanks to the satellite systems in SAT and GSAT, today we have 600 channel DTH. It provides you information at home other than the entertainment. It enables learning, whether it is education channels, or knowing about what is happening in this world around you, it comes to that system. It is for again the children. We used to study geography in the past. Maps were You will catch the most sensing data available on the website itself from India and from the world. You know everything about your country, everything about your world is again for you to learn more and more about the place where you are. The awareness of the climate itself, which is important for the posterity and it is you who are going to be affected by the changes in climate or the environmental issues. And it is these systems that help us to understand what is happening. It is for the posterity. So there are several things which you can see in your day-to-day -day life today. There are several things which will be useful for you as you grow from this generation to the next generation. Space provides that platform. Space along with all the wisdom that we have through other sources. Together, you can. Though technology is more accessible with the help of HSI and non, it is not so much common and accessible in rural areas. So can we expect which, uh, new projects which can make The EduSearch is a need given to the satellites. All the communication satellites can be used for this purpose. We can have a teacher for the classroom here and several around in the country can learn from the teacher, they can interact. So our future direction is to enhance that, ability to reach out, ability also to bring new technologies that are coming. Bring that along with the cities and reach out. Taking medicine is another area. We can consult a super specialist in some good place. If you have all the information and the doctor to help you and you can reach out, he can virtually see you if this is possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So I want to ask that uh, in the background of the education center, how can this sort of uh, offer uh, security to citizens, individual security? I am in the first part. I am Nejita from Alam. So I am asking whether this sort can provide uh, citizens uh, in the, uh, for the security of citizens, individual citizens. We have the uh, ISRO has got good remote sensing satellites. Uh, so can we prevent uh, such crimes? They say that uh, you can if somebody falls in an accident or in a crime situation, if we call an emergency, then we can locate that place. And it can be a good helping. And there, are, yeah, there are two, two possibilities. One is 
if you carry a beacon with you, which is operating at 401 megahertz, and if you are in a distress, it can be activated or it could also be activated by itself if there is a crash. And this scheme is called search and rescue system, available in the whole world. If you are in a helicopter, if you are in an aircraft, if you are in an expedition to the state guards of the Himalayan region, you carry this with you and you register your number. India too has a ground station, world around there are solar participants. So if you are in distress where you are, this will be known. If you are in a vessel going for fishing, they also have this facility. This is number one. Number two is the position system, location identification. There are satellites called navigation satellites. And your coordinates, X, Y, Z can be identified. If you are able to get signals from at least four of these satellites, good signals. We have the GPS system, global positioning system. There is a Galileo system which Europe is making. There is a GLONASS which the Russians are making. India is building an Indian regional navigation satellite system, seven satellites constellation. First one of it will go in May June 2013. So this is another area. It helps the vehicles, it helps the trains, cars, and people also. This is at gross level. The other part of it is the spatial information system, which is more important when there is a disaster. Suppose there is a flood or a major earthquake and government wants to take immediate relief operations. So these database, spatial database will help you to take proper actions. It gives you the area of attention, the roads available, the other resources available like hospitals where you can be put for some time. All these are readily available that relief operation person can make use of it. It's a national mission, national database of improving your preparedness to handle any major disaster. So these are the areas where space fits into. So one more question. Yes. What is the status of our cryogenic engine? Very good question. In beginning of May 2013, we are planning to have the next flight test of the Indian cryogenic stage. If you recall, we started this activity in the early 90s, 1992 90. India decided that we must develop this complex technology, which is only a possession of very few countries in the world. It's complex for very various reasons, and we have been going through the development of it. In 2010, April, we had the first flight test. There was a small hitch in one of the components. But what we have done over the last three years to analyze the entire data that we have, make all the corrections necessary, do the test on the ground. We had almost 35 tests of the cryogenic subsystems and engine and the stage done on the ground. We also had about 800 simulated wind tunnel tests of the GSLV rocket, again, that had its own history. So all this have been done, and I'm very happy to say today that on 31st January, which is just two days from now, the next GSLV launch campaign is starting. That means the vehicle is going to be assembled at Shri Kota from 31st January. The cryogenic flight stage is getting integrated at Mahindri. I was there the day before yesterday. And we need to do one important test because this cryogenic engine has to ignite in the vacuum condition and it goes from the third stage. So we are trying to simulate 
get that condition on the ground and we set up a very major facility simulating that vacuum condition. Facility is ready now and in the middle of March we will be conducting that high altitude test. And if you are clear that all those ignitions, there are four ignitions to take place in about five seconds. If they take place well in vacuum conditions simulated on the ground, then we go with very high of level of confidence for the next flight. Thank you. Good morning, sir. My name is David Paul. I am from the Civil Department of Amarjo. So I got basically two questions to ask you. We are telling about the ever expanding universe. Uh, my question to you, what is the meaning of this infinite space? Basically, that is not my field of expertise. I am also a student like you. But what I understand is there is a standard model right, to understand the universe. And we essentially talk about the particles on one side. We talk about the forces, gravity, force, strong, weak, electromagnetic, etc. and the interactions. This is one part of it. Matter, anti-matter. We also talk about the Big Bang theory and we try to simulate those conditions on the ground. This is another experiment that is taking place at the moment. That is a CERN experiment, polar experiment, trying to simulate those conditions of high temperature, etc. etc. So this is something happening. There are several theories also, cyclic theories, there are steady state theory about the universe, essentially trying to interpret the way we evolve and what is going to be the future. And people also talk about now not one universe, they talk about multiverse, this another term which is getting in reach. So this is that I can share with you, the rest of it we could study together. Uh, sir, another question. They say in 100 years we explore, explore the limits of the solar system. Now, can humanity ever reach the stars? It is related to what I said in the first one itself. That is, as of now, at least 100 planets have been identified by the as part of the solar stars. So, that's why the universe is expanding. Good morning, sir. I am Lena Vakis from Amal Jyoti. India estimates almost 1.2 to 1.3 billion dollars for space exploration every year. Being a country with almost 29% of the people below the poverty line and a current economic decline of 5.9%, sir, uh, should this amount be sent for to utilize the economy or to fix the education system which is of more importance to the common public? The first question which I answer was partly towards this action. This question was asked to Dr. Sarabhai in the 60s. Can a poor country like India afford to spend money on an exciting high technology like space, easy to work? In those days, America and Russia, they were looking at moon and putting human beings on the moon. But Dr. Sarabhai said, India, we are looking at space technology to look at the problems of India. What are the problems? Education. Illiteracy has been one of the major and is one of the major problems of the country. How space technology can really help? It is helping. Food is an issue. And we talk about a population growth and we should ensure the minimum food. So in the area of food, that is food security, water security, today the satellite based information is doing wonders. If you look at the environment, again, the satellites are providing several tools to the future system. India is an agrarian country. It's a monsoon dependent country. So what is going to be the agricultural production in India every year, it is dependent upon how the one soul is going to be. So your ability to predict the weather, ability to understand the phenomenon of one soul, and precisely the onset of one soul, people from Kerala must be knowing more about it, onset of one soul, the one soul rain, the 
total precipitation and over the various regions in the country if you get timely precipitation suddenly it helps so our inability to have the proper data about our oceans about the land about the atmosphere so that people can do the study modelage and predict these are all the areas where our satellites are providing information so it is the vital data for eradication of those problems that you manage this space is the number one number two as i said if you look at the government expenditure we are putting 0.34 percent 0.34 percent of the government expenditure of the space this is a small amount but what impact it has made there is a study conducted by madras school of economics they said what we can even tabulate is much much more than that. I'll give you two numbers. Here we have the fishermen in this country who go out in vessels to catch fish. They use uh, vessels, big ones, with the kerosene or a diesel. From the information that the satellites are providing, they are able to locate the fish and go there rather than going round and round and spending the fuel. And what is known from the means, they save almost 5 lakhs per year. That is one person saves one 5 lakhs per year because they get the information, they need not go around and around. In the country there are 50,000 such vessels. So you just multiply and see how many crores we have saved in diesel kerosene. So who are the beneficiaries? that owners of the vessel on one side. You also reduce so much of pollution. You also reduce so much of burden on the economy to get those precious oil. Number one. We talk about the ground water. You may not see in Kerala much of it. You have to locate where you can get water. You go to Rajasthan, Gujarat, Karnataka, etc. etc. There are areas where it is very difficult to locate. If you go with your normal surface geological information what is available, they get 50-50, that is 50 percent success rate. But if you can get this large uh, synoptic information in the satellite, if you can locate the forks, lineaments and such features which come only from the satellite, that number goes to 90 percent. Imagine you spend almost a lakh of rupees as an individual to dig a well and you find there is no water. But here, that success rate goes up to 90 percent. And we have data at the moment from about 3 lakh wells. Just a sample from a few places. That itself you multiply and then you can say how many lakhs of rupees or how many lakhs of crores are being saved by the people in this country using skills. Tele-education, you can reach out. Always you require such engineering colleges everywhere. If there is a teacher at here, several colleges can listen to the lecture that they provide you. That is not education. This is the way to reach out. If you want to look at the state of your forest, first time we had a total understanding of the forest in the country using spatial data. Otherwise, it takes years and years for you to go to Western Ghats or Himalayas to find out where there is a forestation, where there is deforestation. The Today, every month we can get that information. So these are some of the advantages. The use of water, you can get information. So it is more the development in time. That is why I said India is the role model on how to use space of this approach. Thank you.